Wherever seeds are found, so are seed predators. Post-dispersal seed predation is a ubiquitous process playing an important role in the population dynamics of plants from the tropics to the tundra. In this slide, we are looking at the seeds of Ceteria faberi, an agricultural weed. The seeds fell to the soil surface beneath a senescing soybean canopy in an arable field in the north-central corn belt of the U.S. As you can see, the mice feeding upon these seeds made sure there were no survivors. Because seed predation has such important impacts on plant demography, ecologists working in many different types of ecosystems are interested in measuring how much seed predation is taking place and what proportion of the seeds dispersed in a given year survive predation. In many predation studies in the ecology literature, predation measurements are made as cumulative time series showing seed survivorship over some period of time. For example, monthly measurements are often made over the course of a year after an initial pulse of seed dispersal. This measurement approach is not feasible for agricultural weeds, the subject of our study. In many agroecosystems, short-term weed seed predation rates are so high, as demonstrated in the previous slide, that after several days, no viable seeds remain on the soil surface. Instead, weed seed predation measurements in arable systems are typically made as a series of sequential short-term trials. Repeated pulses of seeds are introduced into the system, mimicking the seed dehiscence patterns of the maternal plants. Following these pulses, seed predation is measured over a two to three day period. This is done repeatedly over the course of the study period to determine the instantaneous rates of seed predation at any given point in time. Seed predation data from such studies often look like the figures shown here. Rather than a survivorship curve, we instead see a series of widely fluctuating instantaneous predation rates. Here you can see that invertebrate predation started off high in midsummer and tapered off as fall progressed. In contrast, vertebrate predation started off very low and picked up in mid-September of each year. This information provides useful data about the relative predation activity of different predator taxa at different times in the year for different weed species. However, these data do not help us answer a very important question. What proportion of seeds dispersed in a given year survive to potentially participate in seedling recruitment the following year? Elasticity analysis of simulation models of weed population dynamics suggests that the annual proportion of weeds surviving post-dispersal seed predation should have an enormous impact on weed population growth rates, yet almost no studies have been done to quantify this proportion in the field. This is because most of the seeds that do survive predation in arable systems do so by washing into cracks or being hidden by decaying plant residues. A direct estimation of the number of seeds surviving predation previously required wet sieving vast amounts of soil to recover seeds, and then testing the recovered seeds for viability. We set out to determine whether the sequential trial approach to measuring short-term seed predation could be adapted to produce estimates of long-term seed predation rates through some sort of scaling relationship. To accomplish this, we made two types of seed predation measurements in parallel. Point estimates consisted of weekly measurements of seed predation, each made over a 48-hour interval. Seeds were added to the soil surface at the beginning of the interval, removed at the end of the interval, and remaining viable seeds were counted. Direct estimates also involved weekly inputs of seeds to the soil surface. However, seeds were not recovered from the predation exclosures until the study's end. This is what our experimental setup looked like. Predation exclosures for point estimates and direct estimates of seed predation were spatially coupled for a given exclosure size. The exclosures shown here were designed to permit entry to both invertebrate and small vertebrate predators. Within our exclosures, we use different types of predation substrates for the different measurements. For point estimates, we used seed cards to measure predation rates. Each card consisted of a 15 by 10 centimeter piece of 60 grit sandpaper to which 30 seeds and a dusting of field soil were adhered lightly with 3M fixative. Seed cards were placed in exclosures 
at the beginning of a 48-hour predation interval and removed at the end of the interval when remaining seeds were counted. Seed trays for direct measurements of predation over the three-month interval consisted of wire mesh open-topped boxes, 10 centimeters on a side by 3 centimeters deep. These trays were filled with field soil at the beginning of the study, leaving a 1 centimeter lip protruding to prevent soil from washing away. Seeds were added to the soil surface on a weekly basis, using seed rain measurements from adjacent plots to guide seed addition rates. Any seed losses to germination were recorded weekly. At the end of the three-month period, the trays were removed from the field and seeds were recovered through elutriation and viability determined through tetrazoleum testing. Once we had data on seed predation made either through sequential point estimates performed on a weekly basis throughout the three-month period or direct estimates made during that entire period, we wanted to convert the point estimates to single rates describing seed survival of post-dispersal predation during the three-month time period. This value is referred to here as S-bar. There are two published models for doing this. The Middlebach and Gross approximation was developed to describe seed losses to predators at a daily time step. It assumes continuous seed exposure to predators with daily seed survival rates, S sub D, compounded over the larger time step to yield S bar, overall seed survival of post-dispersal predation. The Westerman et al. model describes the fate of pulses of seed rain, Y sub I. Each of these pulses is exposed to seed predators for some time period K and survives at some rate S sub J. When K is very small, seed exposure to predators is brief, and predation is an episodic process that occurs rapidly after seed dispersal. When K increases, seeds are exposed to predators for a longer period of time, simulating a situation in which seed burial by soil or plant residues is very slow. Once S bar has been calculated, M bar is obtained by subtracting S bar from 1. Comparing the distributions of data for direct measurements of long term predation with the two estimation methods shows a clear choice. The Westerman model closely follows the pattern of the observed data, whereas the Middlebuck and Gross approximation overestimates long term predation rates. The simple linear regression of point estimates scaled to long-term predation rates using the Westerman model matches nicely with the direct measurements of long-term predation. For a mixed model with replication nested within year, treated as a random effect, the best linear unbiased predictors and the residuals both look sound. Now we will give a brief demonstration of how to use the Westerman model to scale from short-term point estimates of seed survival of predation to long-term seed predation rates. We will show you two scenarios, one in which predation rates are not weighted by variation in seed rain, and a second in which we do weight seed predation weights by seed rain. The first scenario would be relevant to a situation in which there is significant temporal overlap between seed predation and seed rain. The second would be relevant to a situation in which there is less overlap between seed predation and seed rain. Let's consider a data set consisting of five sequential weekly point estimates of seed survival. Each point estimate is made over a 48-hour interval. From our experience in tuning the scaling model, we found that a 96-hour exposure resulted in the best fit between scaled point estimates and direct measurements of long-term predation. Therefore, in our example, we will use a K of 2 which will expose seeds to seed predators for two 48-hour intervals. In step two, we compound the point estimates of seed predation shown in step one for two periods. So seeds deposited on the soil surface in week one survive at a rate that is the product of the rates for the first and second time steps, or 0 0.20 times 0.15. Seeds in the second cohort survive at a rate that is the product of the rates for the second and third time steps, or 0.15 times 0.35. This is repeated for all five cohorts in this data set. The sum of these products forms the numerator of our estimate, estimator of S bar. The denominator is formed by the sum of the proportion of seeds exposed to predators in each time step. Since we're not waiting by seed rain, these can all be set to one. Solving this quotient gives us a value of 0.16 for S bar. 
In step three, we convert S bar to M bar, the long-term predation rate, by subtracting S bar from one. In our example, M bar equals 0.84. In this scenario, we have the same predation rates, but seed rain is very heterogeneous during the predation intervals, resulting in uneven overlap between seed rain and predator activity. Now, we have data on both predation rates and seed rain to consider. In step two, the product of the predation rates for weeks J and J plus one are multiplied by the seed rain for cohort J. The denominator of S bar is the sum of the seed rain for the five predation cohorts considered here. Survival is much lower in this example. Most of the seed rain occurred in week one, when survival was quite low, 0 0.20, and less occurred during later weeks, when survival was higher. Only 5% of the seeds survive predation during the longer interval. Converting to M bar, 95% of the seeds were eaten during this five-week period. To read more about cases in which there is uneven temporal overlap between seed rain and seed predation, see Westerman et al., 2011. To conclude, the Westerman model for scaling point estimates of seed survival of post-dispersal predation to long-term measurements of seed predation appears to be robust. We found that it worked well for four site years of data on two different continents and contrasting cropping systems. In this final slide, we show the distribution of M bar for three weed species and two predator taxa. The rates shown, ranging from 0.3 to 0.99, are more than sufficient to have impacts on the economics of weed management and low external input farming systems. Because of the ease of making point estimates of seed predation, this newly validated technique for temporal scaling of these data to long-term predation rates should support better inferences on the impact of weed seed predation on ecological weed management. We hope that the technique will be of use to ecologists studying seed predation in natural systems as well.